It began with um, a few of us, friends of mine, uh, having a discussion in a coffee shop um, about uh, an issue that is uh, national in scope, and that is um, cities, municipalities all over the United States are now um, starting to take a new look at um, flags, statues, memorials, and we were just, you know, talking about um, things in Burlington here and the issue of the uh, marketplace mural came up. Uh, we do think that it's undeniably a white supremacist um, mural. Um, it uh, completely obliterates the over 12,000 years of uh, First Nation civilization history. And this is one of the things that's most shockingly uh, inexplicable about it is it's one thing if we're talking about a Robert E. Lee Memorial put in in uh, Charlottesville in 1924 post reconstruction but it was another time we're talking here about a mural that uh, was unveiled in 2012 after apparently um, one would imagine um, Lots of discussion, uh, possible designs, drawings, and we would hope some oversight into the, uh, from conception to unveiling, regarding the mural. Dear Canadian muralist Pierre Hardy, I am writing with the intention of upholding your dignity, experience, perception, and voice as a human being. I'm also writing with the intention of upholding my dignity, experience, perception, and voice as a human being. Race matters. Race as a social construct was created for the sole purpose of oppressing some people, people of color, and financially and socially empowering others, white people. Well, in some ways, you got the sound on? Yeah. In some ways, this is going to be easier. Uh, it's us. And uh, here we are, three of us. Uh, gives us a lot of mobility inside. We don't have to wait for the media to catch up. And we will go and we will um, proceed with uh, asking the receptionist if we can get uh, two minutes of the mayor's time so that we could ask him this question about whether He's going to uh, continue to consent being in the original mural. Okay. There's a group called the Off the Wall Coalition, mm -hmm. and we're um, working around the mural uh, of your Leahy Way. Mm -hmm. And we had. Um, word that the mayor um, wanted to have a conversation about the mural. I mean, we could. What's, what are you looking for? Well, we could do two things. We can sit here and wait for him to return, or um, we could just as easily, if you want to call him. Hey, can I help you guys? I know you sent him like, your. Yeah, your yeah we're here. Here. Um, The mayor, approximately three months ago, indicated that he wanted to have a community conversation about the mural. One of the possibilities was to have a second mural across from mm -hmm. the current mural. Another possibility is to amend the current mural. Mm -hmm. And another possibility is to do both those things. Mm -hmm. um, so, but there needs to be some kind of public input before any decision is made on that. Yeah. We do not want a separate uh, art piece in which um, we're going to uh, essentially stick um, people from communities of color in a separate but less equal form of um, art that uh, they're hoping will compensate for how white supremacist the first piece is. From the city's perspective, disagreement, dissatisfaction, um, difference of opinion is healthy and, and part of democracy and, and certainly welcome. Uh, vandalism, taking this decision into one's own hands and uh, uh, trying to enforce that on the whole community is not okay.
Good evening, Mr. Petrarca. Is racist, classist, sexist, historically inaccurate, and benefiting in elevating the sort of the world. It's based on the I find the new world excruciating. I don't want to be here because it's emotional to me. <laughs> and I don't know that everyone in this room deserves to have insight to that emotionality. Being here today makes me feel like a historical minstrel um, because I'm put in a position to share my heart's truth and white people be in a position to erase that truth regardless of how painful it is. There's a whole history of people of color in Burlington <clears throat> that continues to go unrecognized. And um, I'm a contributing member. Ah. Finish your, finish your, finish your. No, it's okay. Chief Stevens, I gotta work Chief. on my penmanship. Here we go. We are unique in that way. We speak for ourselves. We are not victims. We are survivors and have been survivors for a long time. It's problematic just from the fact that it doesn't represent Abenaki people. But uh I want to find ways to work with you guys in promoting our culture in a positive manner. Last year, a plaque for the mural was defaced, prompting a growing debate about whether the mural should stay, go, or be changed. Some say it's racist because it excludes people of color. Some people say, oh, of course it's white. Vermont is a very white state. My feeling is some big mistakes were made in the mural's commissioning and content. I am curious. Who gets to write and tell our state's history? And how do they choose what to highlight and what to omit? How is a community affected when a biased history is represented in an enormous mural and erected in its city center? People of color in Vermont, as in the rest of the country, suffer from racism daily. Racism is part of our history and present. Most often, white people look the other way when they see racism, if they can see it at all. To me, the way the mural misrepresents history perpetuates the blindness white people have to systemic racism. How will Burlington rectify having put up this mural with its biased historical narrative in its city this center? This resolution is basically asking for the city attorney to look into the legal ramification in taking the middle down. Because a city is not a city without its people. I think we should say a thank you to community members who have brought this question forward. Are we racist? Are we narrow-minded? Do we truly value the diversity of our community? And to wrestle with these kinds of questions is not easy work, and some would prefer to avoid it. But just because it's uncomfortable and it's not fully welcomed by everyone, it doesn't mean that we should not do it. And it's very clear to me that there are problems uh, with this mural. It's first of all, causing some, I think, real pain in the community. There's a lot to be sorted through here. I think we need to do that work to sort through it. So, second for the agenda. Second. All right, so all in favor? Aye. 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 To review and consider a wide range of options that leads to a more inclusive outcome, respects Burlington's and Vermont's diverse history, and educates our residents and visitors. My name is Albert Petrarca, and I'm with the Off the Wall Coalition. Hello, my name is Lisa Lord, and I'm a Burlington resident who would like the mural taken down. My name is Rajni Eddins. I'm not always feeling appreciated or valued or seen or respected, and I think that. If we're going to honor the mutual humanity in people, then we can do a greater service by using this as an opportunity to catalyze that. We are stuck between a choice, uh, and that choice is going to be um, the morality of um, not being a racist city, or are we going to protect um, uh, 
the monetize uh, uh, investors of, um, of Church Street. Decreasing racism is the white man's and white woman's responsibility. Images like the mural presented as our historical narrative reinforce racism by highlighting a continued disregard for people of color. The first time that I saw the mural, it was not inclusive to me. I did not even understand the community very well, but I just looked at it and could not find anything about what um, the city should be about. And when I walk by, I see people of color, I see new Americans, you know, I was new here. But the first time I saw the mural, I had like a strong feeling this is not inclusive at all. ELAP may be perceived by a large percentage of white people to be quote unquote inclusive. But I assure you, for a large percentage of founding First Nations people in other communities of color, it is not. When we say inclusiveness, it's not only people of color, but it is also people with intellectual and physical disabilities. It's uh, elders, it's uh, the gay and lesbian in our community, and you know, also the native that been here before all of us. Ready to vote? Ready. Call the clerk show. Call the roll, please. Councillor Dean? Yes. Councillor Jang? No. Councillor Hartnett? Yes. Councillor Nodell? Yes. Councillor Mason? Yes. Councillor Paul? Yes. Councillor Pine? No. Councillor Roof? Yes. Councillor Shannon? Yes. Councillor Tracy? Council President Wright? Yes. Eight ayes, three nays, one absent. The resolution as after amendments passes by a vote of eight to three. To me, the way out, and I said it before, and I'm gonna say it again, that middle need to come down. Definitely take it completely down and do not put it in any outside building. And I think it is important for people um, you know, to think about why this is now bubbling up right now. And we know that way before the mural was revealed, people expressed concerns, but it was ignored. Why?